I give God all the glory for the opportunity he gave unto me on this series 3. I pray that God will give you the grace to make heaven in Jesus name. This is the continuation of my testimony from second series, where I narrated about my assignment in the Christendom. I told you how we started by establishing fake churches because the target and mission of my calling is to eradicate holiness in the church. We believe that if holiness continues in the church, if they still remain in the true word of God and if we didn't deceive them and gave them the counterfeit they will continue to make heaven. That was the reason why we started establishing fake churches by calling fake ministers. Apart from establishing fake churches we also have other preparation and area we work. For example, our preparation in gospel musician, the way we deceived the choirs, our works in baptism and holy communion and how we work among the workers in the church, these and many more I will emphasize in this series. When I started my assignment, we first ordained our fake minister with water, sperm, and stars we collected from the anointed men of God. Whenever we sent our minister to come and establish their own church, they don't start in local way, though I'm not saying that anybody that start church in big way is from devil. God can still use or make you to start in big way if God want it that way. But for own fake minister, mostly we made them to start in big way. Sometimes, they might also start in rough and terrible way but it all depends on the level of the demon that uses them. But if the level of demon that uses them is from local level, they can start with poverty. Moreover, I'm not saying that anybody that starts the work of God in poverty is from God. There is no system that devil cannot use but during my assignment we normally established our minister in better way and also gives them good location. These fake ministers I'm talking about, they are trained and prepared for the mission ahead. We have already taught them the type of sermon they will preach. The sermon we taught and trained them is not for salvation. We only taught them to teach their congregation about God's love, God's greatness, God's goodness, and also to regard God as the almighty powerful and miracle maker. That God can bless them, do wonder. They should also make their congregation to see God as a friend but should not make them to remember or allow them to see God as someone who is seriously annoyed with this world of sin. They should not bring their mind to the destruction that is coming ahead of this world. When they are preaching, they will be telling people don't commit sin but they will not specify the particular sin the Bible is talking about. While preaching they will not emphasize on those common sins every day, but they always base their preaching on miracle and healing. For example, a pastor wants to preach in a month. Probably, three services in a week, which is three times four equals to twelve. Imagine, a pastor preaching twelve times in a month but will only base his preaching and messages on miracle, success, breakthrough, power, and faith. Out of this twelve message, it seems so difficult for him to give a topic about holiness, righteousness, and also find it so difficult to preach about the fear of God. Moreover, any topic or sermon they give, they will surely round it up will blessing and miracle. Please listen to me, I'm telling you if you see any pastor preaching like that, know that he is one of agent of darkness. He is either register agent or ignorant agent what I mean by ignorant agent is that, some people are working for devil and yet didn't knew they are working for the devil but thought they are working for God. Although, you might not behold them going to the shrine or darkness to obtain diabolic powers neither makes any covenant but ignorantly they are working for the devil because their sermon and system is same system of darkness. So, if you see a pastor in a month preaching about miracle, wonders, power, faith and love of God, though is good to love God. Jesus Christ also says love your God because if you love God you wouldn't do things that will hurt or make God to be annoyed. So, when we are talking about love God, love God is not only about spending money in church or coming to the church regularly but love your God means fear God, fear him and obey his word. Loving God is an act of obeying the commandment of God and not by spending or giving money alone. But this satanic minister, due to their great commission and satanic business they only preach about what pleases them. Their preaching is only based on self-profit. But what I'm saying is that, these are people fake minister we train them to preach about some things around salvation but will deceive people on the language of salvation. 
they will teach their congregation that if you are coming to church, confess the name of Jesus Christ and accept him as you personal Lord and Savior, truly the Bible stated about this fact. They also told their member to come regularly to church, pay your tithe and offering, donate in the church. They would also tell them is not good to fornicate, tell lies but the reason why church was established is for the continually repetition or mentoring of that sin every day. The reason we comes to church every day is for the pastor to continual repeating that sin that will hinder us from making heaven but what we are repeating every day in our church today is blessing and breakthrough. A pastor that preach about how to become great last week will also preach about how to become blessed this week. If all these messages are based on total righteousness about the kingdom of heaven, what do you think Christendom will be today? So, you preacher watch yourself. If you read or listen to this sermon and you refuse to change, this sermon will judge you. If truly it was God Almighty that called you and you later divert and preach the way other preachers are preaching, God will reject and replace you. God has a reason for your calling because he has something in his mind. He wants to speak out from your mouth but instead you forsake the mind of God and goes about preaching what others are preaching. What is important in imitating other people's sermon? Forget about what other preach, they knew the mission or assignment and what their God sent them for. Though, I also preach about blessing, miracle, and breakthrough in my church but this is done either once in a month or three months and any day I preach about it, people are blessed. But my real work and assignment is to preach about rapture and holiness, so that people can make heaven. Go back to your Bible and see reason why God raised pastors, prophets, and ministers. God always call people to preach about repentance, to warn people. Even Abraham also preach about salvation, his life preach total obedience to the Lord. You can't just continue turning the Bible upside down for people, however, if someone has been deceiving you all this while, please after reading or listening to this testimony don't give yourself unto deception such again. Hence, this how we taught our people fake minister on how to eradicate the fear of God from the heart of people. We told them to teach people that God is good, love etc. but the fear of death and hellfire is not always remembered. You know in human being, it is when something is continually repeating on their head they will remember. Some churches, throughout a whole year, they will not treat about Revelation and any church that want her member to be alive in Christ they must be treating Revelation every year. So, let them know what is coming upon them if they refuse to live a holy life. Church is not an entertainment hall, why should your member be clapping for you whenever you are preaching? If your members continue clapping for you every day that means you are out of the way. You must preach and chastise them with the word of genuine salvation. There was a day when Jesus Christ was preaching to the people and they went away from him. John 6 verse 65 to 67 and he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my father. From that time many of his disciples went back, and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Just because you are afraid to lose member that is why you refuse to preach the truth. You didn't care if they lose heaven. God is losing many souls every day while you kept gaining more souls in your church. Your church is filled up while heaven is reducing. What an unfortunate scenario. My dear, God is disappointed on you because you have abandoned your service. If truly you are working for God you must care about souls, salvation, and not population. God doesn't care for your population but he only cares for salvation. These are ways to identify and differentiate between fake minister and genuine ministers of God. Moreover, our people in the kingdom of darkness we trained also does miracle, we gave them power to perform miracle. You see all those holy and righteous church where they used to preach holiness and salvation, where people heard and received the true word of God but most of the time you will see them been occupied and accumulated with various kinds of problem in their life. Though they will pray and pray fervently yet they will not receive answer to their prayer, do you know the reason why? Is not that God doesn't answer their prayer but due to the monitoring and standby demons we sent against them, to be reporting and accusing them of their prayer. 
the demon will hold a strong reason against them and said, God your word say no sinner shall go unpunished. Proverb 11 verse 21 Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. God, though this brother deserve this blessing but because he has committed the sin that is why he must be punished according to your word, because your word said in book of Deuteronomy 28 verse 47 to 48 Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee they will remember that God has promised to hand them over to their enemy, handing them over to the demon so that the demon will punish them. These quotations have been hindering them from receiving blessing and answer to their prayers. The worst part is that, when the faithful ones among them pray in order to receive blessing, God will send an angel to bring the blessing to them but when the angel get to the church the same thing that happened to the angel assigned to gives answers to Daniel will also happen to them. Daniel 10-12 verse 13 Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days, but, lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. The demons will stand against the angel and seize the blessing while the person will still be expecting the blessing from God but unknown to them God has already released the blessing. Sometimes, those little little sins you didn't count nor regarded as severe sins such as backbiting, rebellion, lies, laziness, coming to church late. Maybe somebody failed to do what is expected to do in the church, unfaithfulness in tithe payment, none redeeming your vow and pledges, commits adultery or living a pretentious life, the enemy can use any of this to accuse you because they knew that God is faithful and can't deny his word. Even if the angels want to fight they will tell the angel, you know God is not respecter of any person, even if heaven and earth pass away the word of God must surely be fulfilled this accusation will cause the angel to hold their peace, they will be silent and wouldn't fight nor do anything and the demons will seize the blessing. Sometime people used to wonder reason why big miracles are not always rapid within those holy holy and righteous churches, miracle are not always happening there because the accusers of the brethren are accusing them greatly. But within those fake fakes and counterfeits churches you will witness mighty miracles, am not saying that any church they does much miracle is of the devil. Don't misquote me but am just telling you ways of detecting them. If you see any church and sins are abound within, dressing like Jezebel and God refused to warn them about that sin, God refused to correct and mention their mistakes to them but instead he kept blessing them, am very sure that church is not from God. If truly it was God doing those miracles, he will chastise them because the business of God is not miracle. The business of God in the church is salvation. Miracle is just an invitation to give the people faith just to build our faith so that we can listen to what God want but most of churches today capitalize only on miracle. Their mission is all about miracle, if so then how will God gain from his business? God has invested much on gospel but gospel is bringing no gain. Please nobody can deceive you unless you deceive yourself. So, in those churches the faithful ones will pray and follow the word of God but the testimonies will be scarce from them because we are accusing them but within those fake fakes churches nobody is accusing them. Apart from this, even the power that release miracle to them, the gods they serve. I mean the heavenly array, the queen of heaven doesn't count about their sin. That is why some pastor while preaching in their church, they will say the blood of Jesus Christ is there any time you commit sin, go and plead for the blood. It will remove your sin and you shall get whatever you need from God. Please listen, the blood of Jesus Christ is not for abuser sinner. The blood of Jesus Christ is for sinners that repent from their sin. When you repent and forsake your sin the blood will cancel the record then God will see you as a holy man. Then you will be abducted into the kingdom of God as a child of God. But not that he forgives you today and you go back as a bastard, 
tomorrow you plead the blood again and come back as a son and tomorrow you go back as a bastard. No, God isn't a baby, do you know how many years it took God test Abraham before he could called him a friend? Romans 6 verse 1 to 2 What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin, that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we, that are dead to sin, live any longer therein? So, because we have grace, must we continue to abuse the grace? No, so, if your pastor told you that the blood of Jesus Christ is there for you to commit sin and use it to bath as bathing water, isn't like that. Hebrew 10 verse 26 to 27 For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. The scripture said if anybody tasted the grace of God and later goes back to those sin, it says such person doesn't deserve heaven. You don't need to be fallen and rising, falling and rising every day. If you see any pastor preaching that any time you commit sin just go and take the blood. Which mean that any time you fornicate, maybe you fornicated three times you just plead the blood of Jesus Christ three times. That is not what the Bible said. 1 Peter 1 verse 15 to 16 But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy it said be holy as your Father in heaven is holy, that means God knew we can be holy. I am not saying we can be holy as God but you can still be holy. Romans 7 verse 19 For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do if Apostle Paul could make it, formerly he said he was trying but the flesh didn't allow him. Hence, later he said I have already obtained it. 2 Timothy 4 verse 7 to 8 I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing if God could empower and strengthen him to be holy and make heaven we also can make it. Is not the same score mark and crown they obtain we are also pursuing? If is the same score mark, you can't continue in sin and expect to obtain the same crown the early apostles obtained, no isn't possible because God isn't a partial God. You must be holy as the early apostles all the time. If you can't do it like them then you can't get what they achieved. If you are seeking after what the old ones get then you must be like the old ones and you must go back to the old time believer. Please be aware that God is not involved in all this modern Christian you are practicing. Even while in the church, the faithful ones will seize all the counterfeits churches prospering in blessing, with giant miracles all times. Hence, God also does his own miracle but the spiritual demonic evil spirit are always hijacking them by constant accusing and reporting of the little little sins of the brethren. But no one is reporting or accusing the counterfeit churches, they have their own gods and their own gods doesn't count neither regard their iniquities. What people believe today in church is just miracle. What is the power behind miracle? You better be careful to know the power behind the miracle you receive or else you will regret after receiving them. It is better not to regret after receiving them because anything that Satan gives you must surely pays for it, don't be a fool. Satan is wiser than you but it only the Holy Spirit that empowers you to be wiser than him. Moreover, whatever Satan gives you, you must surely pays for it either now or in eternity. Don't think you can manipulate God by dining with the devil and seeking after his diabolic power and later use same mouth to praise the almighty God. Whatever devil gives you, some demons will ensure that they dwell with you with that miracle and follow you up in order to frustrate, toil, and manipulate your life in latter day. Now is an appointed time and gracious period for you to pray and seek the face of the almighty Savior Jesus Christ and confess and repent from your evil and former ways and embrace his salvation before it becomes too late. Now is the time for you to start living a holy and righteous life because the only way to acquire divine access to heaven is holy life and without this you can't make heaven. The scripture emphasize about the miracle in resurrection of Lazarus from death, truly he was raised from death but the Bible didn't prove to us if Lazarus eventual make heaven or not after his second death, perhaps until we get there we shall know. 
John 11 verse 43 to 44 And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him, and let him go. This act is called miracle but when we are emphasizing about salvation, Jesus Christ preached about salvation and also does miracle. Hence, miracle is an invitation while salvation is the prophet of God. While emphasizing about church business, I believe by now, you could easily differentiate those whom are called by God and those who indulges into church business. It very obvious to detect and may God bless you as you continue with this message in Jesus name. This was how we used to operate in the area of church business, although I will still emphasize more about it later. However, in the area of model dressing, I specifically devour my time into model, in those counterfeit churches we permit them to dress anyhow because we want them to make use of the dressing material we produced from our demonic kingdoms. In counterfeit churches they don't care about the apparel dressing of the women because they were permitted to dress anyhow without mindful of God's will. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 6 For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn, but if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered we can see how Apostle Paul emphasized the important and how godly women ought to present herself before the Lord. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 13 Judge in yourselves, is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Hence, due to his seriousness concerning this fact, he further asked as reasonable question if it is considerable for women to present herself anyhow before the Lord? He wants us to discern the truth even without informing us because the truth is obvious. Nevertheless, the counterfeit churches tend to prove otherwise by justifying themselves with the following scripture according to 1 Corinthians 11 verse 15 But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering This scripture portray that long hair is your glory and beauty and needs to be covered with scarf while praying to God. Although, in Africa we don't have long hair unlike in Western and Europeans world where the women has long hair but it very unfortunate that many ignorant Christian women have decided to emulate the Western world and culture. The African women didn't have long hair but due to clamor for beauty they have decided to possess artificial long hair, therefore contradicting against the perfect will of God. Today they have what is called attachment, wig on, and hair perm. Even while in the church, they will wear all this artificial attires praising and worshiping God. Yet, God will be doing miracle among them but he will not even open the spiritual eyes of one of them to behold his great wrath or anger against them, yet, God also refused to reveal or open their eyes to see that he is greatly annoyed with them. I wonder why. Moreover, your church doctrine may change but the Bible can't change because it's infallible. Your church and self system of worship and service to God may change but the Bible cannot be altered. This generation will pass away but the word of God can't be broken. The scripture lamented that you should cover your hair as a woman while praying to God and not while talking to your husband, hence, if you can't cover it then shaved it off. If shaving will bring disgrace why not cover it? This warning is fairly plain and simple but some will rather reject it and comfort themselves with 1 Corinthians 11 verse 15 But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering either you believe me or not, that was how we used to train our demonic minister and pastors in the kingdom of darkness. Nevertheless, these are the key point we enforce and gave our ministers and pastors to deceive the world and for their deception enterprise in the church. Howbeit, if you are a pastor or minister of God and you knew very well that devil didn't call you but yet, you still portray in same act of deceit due to ignorant, you have also soil your hands with fake minister whom were called by the devil. John 7 verse 60 Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying, who can hear it? You did better go back to your God and preach the truth to your member, don't be afraid to lose member but rather tell them the truth. John 7 verse 66 From that time many of his disciples went back, and walked no more with him Did you know how many people that refused to fellowship with Jesus Christ when he preached to them? Did it hinder his gospel from growing? No, but rather he continues in his ministration and mission. 
whenever the children of the devil came to hear the truth of the gospel, they might walk away from you, but when the real children of God came unto you, they will be tied down with the truth word of God because they were sent by God. Although, am not surprised because isn't all pastors and minister of God are in the business of God, some are rather in the business of their pocket. In the church, women are mostly used by the devil as a powerful weapon of darkness to destroy churches. These are the various strategies and system we used in our counterfeit church to divert the attention of genuine and holy church of God. Even with all their holiness and seriousness in service of God, yet there wouldn't be any miracle. While those that dress like Jezebel will be receiving multiples of miracle and testimonies. This action will tend to propel confusion among the holy worshippers. They will be confused and wouldn't know what to believe and which church is counterfeit or genuine. They will rather conclude in their heart and say those things we say it's a sin is no longer countered by God due to his showers of blessing upon the counterfeits church, if God is no longer interested in our dressing, then let us dress anyhow we like this is what is happening today in churches. Nobody can't prove that the righteous and godly ways of dressing is better because even you that tend to dress godly are suffering while those you condemn are receiving miracle every day. This has generated a lot of confusion and also caused many believers to backslide. That was how we mark out our strategies. Moreover, I am the architect of that mission. I was the person that executed the assignment during my era in Kingdom of Darkness. If you are under this perpetual bondage, please lose yourself before you die. Your blood is no longer on my head because I am free by the grace of God. If you are still under the deceitfulness of dressing, your blood can't be required from me, because I'm confessing the truth to you and you ought to repent now and ask God for his mercy and forgiveness. That was how I introduced model and start my operation in modeling and worldly dressing in African churches. I map out my assignment outline through my proposal which I submitted to the Queen of the Coast, my proposal quotation was taken from Romans 1:26. for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature I explained to the Queen of the Coast that I wants to give African, an artificial beauty, she took me to the laboratory where I told them that I want to start my assignment in hair beauty and that was how they gave me an idea to introduce stretching cool. You know in African, we have coil hair, so stretching cool would now turn it to straight hair. Therefore from coil hair to straight hair, that means, is not natural anymore, it's now artificial. When I introduced it to the world many people like it and they used it but later they started complaining that their hair was cutting and they no longer have long hair. This also prompts me to goes back to the queen of the coast and she assures me that they will give me another idea, later on I was taken to the laboratory and relaxer was introduced. You might argue with me that in cosmetics, an ordinary cutting soda was used in the production of relaxer. Whatever you might call it, just remember we can even make use of sand as a tool. The most important thing is the covenant that is behind the production. While in demonic laboratory, they produced relaxer for me and I was assured that if they used it on their coil hair, it will change from coil to long or straight hair and it wouldn't be natural anymore. Inasmuch it's not natural, if they dies with it without repentance, this quotation you quote will condemn them. When they told me all these things, they clap for me and we all rejoice and jubilati. That was how we came to the world and started producing relaxer. If you could recall vividly, there was a relaxer called Ostrachian and some old relaxers etc. However, the idea of relaxer was initiated by Queen of the Coast. She was the person who gave me the idea and that was how we started producing it. But still yet, some people came up with complaints that their hair were not long or straight enough. I went back to the Queen of the Coast again and she told me that the only way she could assist me, is to send me to another demonic evil spirit called Medusa, which is specifically in Kingdom of Beauty. She told me that Medusa was a beautiful woman who was cursed by her mistress. Moreover, she was the most beautiful woman in the world, but she was cursed and later turns into a beast. She requested that I should go to her temple, that she will assist me. 
If you have opportune to watch the movie called The Clash of the Titans you will behold how a young man cut off the head of an idol slash beast. The head of that idol is full of snakes and the young man sent to cut off the head is only after the eyes of that beast. Because only the eyes possess power as portray in that movie, which was also needed in the accomplishment of that movie scene. The head of that beast in that movie Clash of the Titans looks exactly same as the woman which Queen of the Coast sent me to meet. When I got to her temple, she greeted me and also requested for the purpose of my visit. I told her that I came to collect an artificial beauty for my people. She said no problem and she promised to render her aid. Instantly she brought out a cup filled with blood and suddenly turns it into mercury, I mean some things like chemical substances. Many of you that always depend in the use of chemicals, do you think all chemical are produced in earthly factory? Even if they were produced in factories, apart from earthly factory you see, there are many other factories in deep sea producing many products you are buying every day in the market. Although, you might be hearing about chemicals, do you know the main source of all these chemicals? Afterward, she Medusa gave me the chemical and told me that when I get to earth, I should miss it and apply with ordinary rubber and it will turns into an attachment. Although, you might be an intellectual in cosmetics products and tends to justify your argument that is only ordinary rubber and chemical mist together that formed attachment. Yes, you are right, but the covenant behind that chemical will speak after it. The covenant we made together with that beast called Medusa is that any body that use the product from that chemical and beauty, after death he slash her appearance and hair shall turns and looks exactly as Medusa her. I mean, whosoever indulges into attachment and beauty clamor or makes up, after death he slash her hair will turns to snakes and am very sure that snake can't and will never enter into the kingdom of God according to Revelation 21 verse 27 and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or make the lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. That was the covenant she enlisted out for me and instructed me to market her product. Moreover, you know in our kingdom, we don't give anything for free. The reward is that, after making use or applying her beauty on head, immediately after you die, your head image and appearance will look same, alike and all your hair will turns to snakes, instantly I agree with her and we sign the paper and the chemical was given to me. That was how we started producing the chemical and using it in the manufacturing of attachment for earthly consumption. You might knew about different kind of chemicals or even quotes their names but will rather advise you to be very careful, because we are living in a world which we never knew about its existence. That is all about attachment. Nevertheless, if you still persist in making use of attachment, wig on, or hair perm on your head and want to bless me by the name of Jesus Christ, perhaps you are wife of a pastor and see it befitting in wearing attachment, no problem, you can go ahead but I believe and knew that Jesus Christ will never take what doesn't belong to him from you. That is why you must do away from artificial and rather remain natural, it's your natural being that will make heaven and not artificial. However, all this attachment and perming I am the author of it therefore, am telling you now that I am out of it. If you are still using them, your blood is on your head. Let me also emphasize about the women of the last day. Do you know that formerly, all the women in the whole world were glorious but God later cursed them? They were cursed due to this end time dressing and fashion by women, it provoked God unto anger and make God to curse all the women of the last day. Isaiah 3 verse 16 Moreover the Lord saith, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. They were cursed not because of murder or worshipping of idol but God cursed women because of their dressing. If you are truly a daughter of Zion child of God and you happen to make use of below abominable attires, surely the curse of God is already upon you. 17 Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. 18 In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet, and their calls, and their round tires like the moon, 19 the chains, and the bracelets, and the mufflers, 20 the bonnets, and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands, 
and the tablets, and the earrings, 21 the rings, and nose jewels, 22 the changeable suits of apparel, and the mantles, and the wimples, and the crisping pins, 23 the glasses, and the fine linen, and the hoods, and the veils. 24 And it shall come to pass, that instead of sweet smell there shall be stink, and instead of a girdle a rant, and instead of well set hair baldness, and instead of a stomacher a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. 25 Thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war. 26 And her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. Above abominable dressing act of women make God to pour out his full wrath and curse upon women of the last day. This is exactly what is going on today in churches. This same reason makes women to lament that they don't have husband, that no man is seeking their hands for marriage. Why should they have husband? Isaiah 4 verse 1 And in that day seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread, and wear our own apparel, only let us be called by thy name, to take away our reproach. Your inability to get married and failure in marriage is as a result of spiritual husband which you brought upon yourself. Afterward, you will cast the whole blame upon witches, wizard, and spiritual husband. Who brought spiritual husband on you? Nevertheless, there is never a problem without a cause. This problem is consequently caused by your involvement into worldly attires and dressing which you brought upon yourself. The anger of God is the enforcing power which empowered the spiritual husband to afflict you. The anger of God brought spiritual husband, the anger gives power to the ancestral demons and witches and wizard. God is there looking at you, seeing them punishing you. He is silent because he knows you are under the chain of sin. It is the curse of God the anger of God that permits the ancestral demons to afflict you. Even though you mention and called the name of Jesus Christ ten times, it wouldn't fail their power neither hinder their demonic exploit against your joy because you are under the anger of God. Your prayer can only be effective and answered whenever you break off from anger of God. Even though you refuse to abhor from worldly fashion and model, yet still got married with children, house, and prosperity, what about hellfire? Therefore, if women on earth refuse to change from their negative mindset on fashion and immodesty dressing, remember God can't change. Malachi 3 verse 6 For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore yes sons of Jacob are not consumed God is not a baby and he can't come down to our level but rather, we are supposed to get to his level and standard, 1 Peter 1 verse 15 to 16 But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy, praise the Lord. However, some may tend to justify themselves by saying if God instructed us not to wear earrings because it is abominable, then why are we piercing our ears with holes? Do you know the meaning of ear piercing? In the land of Israelites, it is slave whose ears used to be pierced with holes in order to distinguish and separate them from freeborn of the land. Deuteronomy 15 verse 16 to 17 And it shall be, if he say unto thee, I will not go away from thee, because he loveth thee and thine house, because he is well with thee, then thou shalt take an aul, and thrust it through his ear unto the door, and he shall be thy servant forever. And also unto thy maidservant thou shalt do likewise. Therefore, if you want to be servant and slave forever, continue wearing earring, but remember heaven is for sons of God and daughters of Zion and not for slaves. If you want to be slave forever, you can continue putting earring. Even if you have already pierced your ear with holes, God can still forgives you only if you stop putting or wearing earring on them. Meanwhile, some are continuously piercing the ear of their children due to ignorant, thereby enslaving themselves and their children into perpetual bondage of earring slavery and hell. Hence. If you are into this sinful act of slavery, this scripture quote is meant for you. Ensure you pray unto God and ask for divine grace of interpretation of the Bible. You must be a good Bible reader who's always sees the Bible as both written word of God and also divine revelation word of God. Unlike many that just read the Holy Scripture as storybook without full divine revelation and understanding, 
also ensure you acquire this knowledge and grace so that the Bible wouldn't stand against you in day of judgment. These and many more are worldly and ignorant altitude that always brought the anger of God upon the women. Nevertheless, some still refuse to hearken unto this severe warning. Even those pastors you chase after and follow up and down, those pastor that parade, jumping up and down on the pulpit, have you asked and verified from them if they had not seen or behold this great warning in their Bible or they simply believe it is an Old Testament? Likewise also, if God would condemn it in Old Testament am very sure the New Testament will do same. Matthew 5 verse 17 Think not that I am come to destroy the law, or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill Jesus Christ said, he didn't come to condemn the Old Testament but rather came to fulfill the whole law and prophesy of old. The Lord Jesus Christ didn't condemn the old law, but he only condemned the curse which God pronounced upon man in Garden of Eden. Genesis 3 verse 19 In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. The curse state that man shall surely dies but Jesus Christ was sent to bring light to the world. He didn't eradicate the law but rather commanded us to put it in our heart. It should stick into our heart, mind, and thought, meditating it thereof every day and night. Even the Holy Spirit didn't make any mistake by using great men of God, thereby combining the Old Testament and New Testament into same book called the Bible. Please don't allow the theologian and philosophy teachers to mislead and deceive you, they taught that the promises of God is differs. Promises of God can't be differ or broken because God is not mocked or changeable. However, concerning those that paints and uses makes up in their body and those into worldly system of beauty clamor, are you aware that the first woman in the Bible to venture into beauty clamor of makes up and painting is Jezebel? 2 King 9 verse 30 And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face, and tired her head, and looked out at a window therefore, if you are into makes up, painting, attachment and worldly system beauty, Jezebel is your mother, and great grandmother. She is one of your relatives and you will surely end up your earthly ministry where she ended up unless you repent. 2 King 9 verse 33 to 37 And he said, throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall, and on the horses, and he trod her underfoot. And when he was come in, he did eat and drink, and said, Go, see now this cursed woman, and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. And they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull, and the feet, and the palms of her hands. Wherefore they came again, and told him. And he said, This is the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the carcase of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field in the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say, This is Jezebel. Imagine also how Jezebel wanted to seduce the man of God called Jehu. When you go through your Bible, Obviously you will discover that she was the first woman that makes up and paint in the Bible. The Lord punished her severely and if you decide to follow her footstep the entire curse pronounced against her will also be your lot. Revelation 2 verse 19 to 23 Notwithstanding I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not, behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds, and I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Moreover, Sarah, Deborah, Hannah, Ruth, Esther and Elizabeth didn't makes up and the Bible didn't portray that they makes up while they sojourned to Shiloh. It was that wicked queen called Jezebel, which the Bible foretold as the first woman to makes up. Hence, if you are into this wicked and sinful enterprise of making up, painting, beauty salon and hairdressing, then you are also from the same lineage of Jezebel. 
Because there must be different between Deborah and Delilah, you can't just wear worldly attires and dress like Delilah and also tends to prove or imitate as Deborah. No, you can deceive yourself but can't deceive God because he is not mocked. I am repeating this warning and emphasizes because I knew many has gone to hell due to this ignorant and unbelief as a result of not hearken unto this warning. I don't want you to be another victim or candidate of hell due to fashionist and that is reason of making this great sound warning, thereby calling you unto an emergency repentance and change of mindset. These audio CD message or write up will bring a salvation unto your soul if you accept it and act upon it and not by forcing or persuading you. I am not persuading anybody to follow me but if you accept it, follow it and work upon it, it will definitely yield fruitful and positively in your life and also becomes a life unto your soul in Jesus name. Howbeit, this was how we used to produce attachment in order to condemn people to hell fire. We obviously and keenly knew that God disapprove and hated every forms of worldly system of fashion. God hated artificial beauty, painting, attachment, and worldly dressing with perfect hatred, for example, let look and emphasize about women wearing trouser. There was a certain day I tune on my television and I behold a woman of God, she was a pastor and missus. I wouldn't mention her name. On that faithful Sunday morning while I was hasting for Sunday service. Then suddenly, a spirit burdened me to switch on my television set, but instead I began to rebuke and bid the spirit, I said, how could I switch on my television set on Sunday morning while hasting for church service? The spirit persuaded me to switch on my TV, that he wanted to show me something. I reluctantly switch on the TV and I saw a woman pastor on live television interview. The interviewer asked her a question and said, Madam some Christian said it is not good for a woman to wear or put on trouser, how do you see to that? She replied and said, Hmm, the Bible said, my people are perished due to lack of knowledge. Please my dear don't mind them. They didn't know there is a difference between women trouser and men trouser. We have men trouser and lady trouser. If you wear ladies trouser and not men trouser it isn't a sin. Let me point out and make it clear to you my dear listener and reader, the statement made by that woman of God is a big lie. There are nothing like ladies trousers. Moreover, I am the person whom designed and invented ladies trouser during our meeting in the kingdom of darkness. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5 The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. This occurred because we have read the scripture, and discovered that God hated it because it is abominable. God said he hated it, therefore can you force or persuade God to love it. God professed that he hated it and has already pronounced it once. The next shall be during judgment followed by eternal punishment in hell. You can't force God to love what you desire or want. God is God and he can't come to your level or standard. You are supposed to go to the level of God. God can never come down to your level because he loves you. These reasons why, you ought to research and read your Bible before death come knocking. If you decided to follow after what your pastor or minister of God says and not comparing or following after the scripture mandate of the Bible, if you dies, you will have yourself to blame because Bible hated it. Someone asked me and said, Madam, I am a Nigerian but an Igbo woman by tribe. As a woman in my culture, you new man always ties and wear wrapper. I asked her and said, is your culture designed by an African demons or by God? Hence, most of our African cultures are designed and introduced by African demons. Even the ways we react and carry out our activities are mostly designed by our African demons. Even though you agree and believe that men should tie and wear wrapper, it is biblical. Inasmuch you knew that wrapper was meant for women, the best is to stay and separate yourself from it. Please forget everything about culture and allow and permit the Bible to be your culture. Some people even told me that in Western or European world, it was the culture for the white women to wear trouser, nevertheless, I proved to them that it was a lie. They should Google out and watch or view those ancient European and Western film and movies. When you view it, you will see how the early white women used to wore a long flowing gown, 
whose look life wedding gown, very elaborate and wide like an umbrella. They would also put sucks or gloves in their hand with a small hat on their head. This was their cultural ways and style of their dressing and not wearing of trouser. It was later in modern day you see women wearing trouser. Wearing of trouser by western world was recently introduced to oppose the agenda or aim of God. Please don't deceive yourself or give in to deceive. God knows the beginning of the world because he was the creator of all creativity. Moreover, which year were you born, that will prompt you to justify yourself before God and tells him story about the world. God knew the beginning and the end of the world, even though you didn't believe, please believe the word of God. This was main reason and purpose we decided to introduce and brought trouser into the church. Today, it very unfortunate that you will see lady evangelist, prophetess and pastors dressing in trouser, makes up with painting in the church like Delilah. Even some of their cleavage part is exposed. I mean half of their breast is shown off. The main primary reason why we designed half naked dress is because we want our agent to seduce men. Therefore, if you put on and dress same half naked with them, it means you have changed and also entangle yourself with them. Some women used to manipulate their dress, they will wore long skirt and same time tear or make an opening around their laps, while some will re-amend their skirt to many quarter and tightly size, thereby showing their inner panty line to seduce men. Therefore, if you want to remain in the church please be perfect and if you don't want to, please just leave or move out instead of tagging yourself as an agent of darkness or serving as agent for the kingdom of darkness. You can't be in the church and same time outside the church. You must either choose one or else heaven will spill you out. I pray that heaven will not spill you out in Jesus name. Please be very careful, if you want to be for the kingdom of heaven, be for the kingdom and if you want to stand against the kingdom of heaven, stand against it and face your judgment. Henceforth, if you don't know which path to follow or which kingdom to serve, this testimony is given you an insight view line in which way or path to follow. Moreover, am not the only person testifying about this facts, there are so many out there who also profess the same truth. There are many pastors and members in the church whom the Lord has spoken to concerning this fact through dream or revelation. Some of them go into trance, while some will die and after two days they will come back alive to share same revelation concerning these facts. I am not the only person professing about this truth. There are some many that had die and later wake up and testify about their encounter either heaven or hell. They were not an agent of darkness and neither in same kingdom of darkness but yet, God revealed us facts to them. Some of them die for about two to three days while some die for 24 hours and later wakes up. Why can't you believe and hearken unto their testimony? Or do you accept Jesus Christ to fall down from heaven and say it to you again? Therefore, am beseeching you to follow the word of God, moreover, concerning this worldly dressing in the church. We have used it to destroy and sent many saints and anointed ministers of God to hell fire. Don't you know there are many saints in hell fire? All those things they believe and agree upon is what they followed, obeyed, and honored, but those things which they didn't believe and dispersed is what destroyed and leads multitude of them to hell fire. Many of them didn't fornicate, steal, commit murder or bewitch but this little little things am professing is what lend them to hell due to their ignorant. This is reason why the Bible testified in Hosea 4 6 My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge my people die due to lack of understanding, that scripture is emphasizing about this facts, because you lack understanding of what am testifying. This is reason why we have the Holy Spirit and you must ensure you obtain it. The Holy Spirit is supposed to reveal all these things to you, many people with the Holy Spirit, having been testifying about how they were shown the truth. It is only through the Holy Spirit you could be able to acquire wisdom and understanding. The Holy Spirit is the wisdom which is supposed to be revealing unto you, showing you mysteries beyond human comprehension and deep insight mystery about God. Therefore, if you don't have Holy Spirit you don't have wisdom and if you don't have wisdom you can't be wiser than the devil. This are the area which the Holy Spirit operates, hence, 
the major work of the Holy Spirit is to continually inform you about those things who serves as a hindering block, that will hinders you from making heaven. The major work of the Holy Spirit is to guard you to heaven. That Holy Spirit you have that always does miracle, that Holy Spirit that you obtain that always speak in tongue but will not tell you things that will hinder you from making heaven that is a counterfeit Holy Spirit. The major work of genuine Holy Spirit is to guard you to heaven and not only by doing miracle every day. However, in those are counterfeit churches, we have also programmed the hands of our fake pastors and minister. We have computerized their hands with spiritual black gloves. Anybody they took to the river or water for immersion water baptism, the moment they deep you into the river they has consciously dedicated and initiate you into the marine kingdom, into the hands of Queen of the Coast. Hence, by indulging into water immersion baptism, you can also be initiated, because their hands had been programmed for initiation, thereby connecting you into the hand of Queen of the Coast. Whenever you go to their church anything can happen to your life. Not only this, you can also be initiated through Holy Communion. Truly, you might be the person that brought the wine by but laying hand on it can also contaminate it. Even by laying hands on you will also initiate you because their hands had been programmed. Their initiation is very strong and powerful. Please also remember that the Holy Communion blood and bread they gave you is not the blood and flesh of Jesus Christ. It is the blood of demon and flesh of darkness. They gave you the blood and flesh of an antichrist. That is reason why you ought to be very careful. If you went there for their miracle, you also went there for initiation. Be careful and remain in holiness. Always remember this, the devil is not a fool. The devil gives and also takes, this is how he operate, please be very very careful. I didn't mention the name of any pastor or categorized or segregate them or point out that this pastor is good or bad. I can't prove or point out to you, it is only the genuine Holy Spirit that dwells in you that will discern or point out the right and best pastor or church to you. If truly you want to go to heaven, immediately you received Christ the first target should be how to acquire or obtain a genuine Holy Spirit. If you don't or refuse to target or seek after the genuine Holy Spirit, there are multitudes of deceivers in the church and on highway. They will deceive and lure you into sinfulness due to ignorant. You can be deceived anywhere but the Holy Spirit will come gently and tells and show you the right path if you still in obedient. Many people are initiated through Holy Communion, Convention, and Anniversary in the church. During the church convention or anniversary many people will come and from there our agents will join those who will cook food for the occasion, because they knew that many people will attend the program or anniversary. Sometimes, if the church brought and makes an arrangement of using cow as a feast for the celebration, before daybreak, our demonic agents will turns the cow where it was tied into a human being. Maybe there was a saint or genuine child of God whom had been terrorizing them with prayer and whom the angel of God has also hindered them from killing. Perhaps the person might be hospitalized or sickened for past three months due to several attack been posse upon him and yet the angel of God still hinder them from killing him. In their meeting, spiritually they will bring or invoke the spirit of that saint or servant of God to the church and spiritually manipulate and transform his body and turns him into a cow. The following morrow, the children of God will kill that person by themselves. They will all rejoice and eat the flesh of a saint, the flesh of human being. Which will posse great anger of God and the anger of God will be upon them and the church. By these processes, they will also be initiated into the kingdom of darkness with either ways. I want to use this medium to plead with you pastors, if you want to do any church anniversary, naming ceremony of convention in your church. Whatever they brought for the ceremony for feast, ensure you give yourself time and make sure you pray over it. Sanctify it all with blood of Jesus Christ so that the plans of the devil and demonic strategies can be cancelled or nullify so that people will not be initiated in the church. People are not only initiated in the church, many are also initiated in the hospital, schools, nursery, and primary and universities level and even in the bank. When I get to series 4, I'm still going to lay more emphasizes about this. I am also sorry for taking much of your time, 
I just decide to explain it in ways you would understand and get my points. As you made up your mind to make heaven today, I pray that God will gives you the enable grace, easy and flexible mind, the mind of spirit to control the flesh and used by the Holy Spirit in Jesus name. May God bless you as you.